Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into this. Um, this video is going to cover both Dreamworld and An Unexpected Party, because there's not really that much to explain in Dreamworld, and... Yeah, that's basically all. Um, I'm not gonna go over basic movement and all that kind of thing, because I'm assuming that if you're watching this pro tutorial, you've probably already been speedrunning the game for a little while. But, um, this level, basically, all you want to do is you want to head in, and you want to fight all of the goblins in the second area. Generally, the best way I've found to do that is to head to the left and kill the red shielded goblins first with just your jump attacks. Generally, if you time it right, you'll get back your jump attack almost immediately. Then you kind of want to head over here, kill that guy if you're able to. And obviously, you want to use your jump attacks smartly. Use them when you're near large groups of goblins so that you kill off multiple goblins at once. Like that. Um, once all the goblins are dead, you just climb the ladder and head straight to the end of the level. Really a pretty easy stage there. This next stage, Unexpected Party, actually has a lot to explain to it. Basically what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to be setting a clip warp near the beginning of the stage in a fairly specific spot, and I'm going to be holding that clip warp through almost the entire level. You'll see it when we get to it, but obviously in order to even leave the house, we have to grab Bobo's walking stick from back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head down the hill. We're actually going to avoid these quests right here until later, because it is faster to do them later. But we're just going to head down the hill to the hide-and-seek kids. And the hide-and-seek kids, we have to hit their cutscene, because we have to get them to hide, because finding the hide-and-seek children actually takes up five different quests in our quest log. But not only that, we're also going to be using that cutscene to set our clip for it. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to long jump from about right here, and just kind of keep running until I hit the cutscene, and then a tiny bit after the cutscene as well. Just to make sure that my clip warp gets set, just like that. Now once our clip warp is set right there, um, what we're going to be heading up and landing on the roof up here. Um, the easiest way to do that is obviously to just run up the hill like this. And then you can do a slash jump to get onto the roof, which um, it requires a little bit of specific timing and angle. Um, the other way you can get onto the roof is just with a long jump, which is a little bit annoying. Not nearly as annoying as the slash jump in most cases, but the most frustrating thing about the long jump is that you can easily lose your clip warp to it. Anyway, once you're on the roof, you kind of just want to head around this way, into this window, talk to kid number one, and back out the window. We're going to be heading over here along this side of the hill, and I'm going to be collecting a number of coins in this route. I haven't really pointed it out yet, but we are going to be collecting a lot of coins in this category, so it's fairly important that you try to keep up on the coin route as well. I will be trying to point out the parts of the coin route along the way. But this level, we're going to end with exactly 25 coins, maybe 24 coins. It doesn't really matter if you miss, like, one coin in this level, because you pick up, I believe, around seven extra coins in Flies and Spiders anyway. But anyway, once you get up here, you just want to head up here, go up here and talk to the kid, get the hammer from him, and then head back down this way. Head along here, and we're going to be heading back into the mill now to grab the nails. The easiest way I've found to hop over the gate to get to the nails in here is to jump onto the lowest haystack and then jump up onto this and just jump over. I always try to break both of those jars with one swipe and then break this jar with the last swipe. And then when I do that last slash jump, I always try to land up here as well. And from here, you can kind of just do a slash and jump attack down to um, save a little bit of momentum. We're going to head out here. And we're going to talk to Sandy Man. Now, normally when you talk to him, there's a little bit of quirk when talking to him that I would like to just talk about very briefly. And that is, um, when you're in here, depending on the speeds that you exit the, um, chamber with, depending on the speed that you exit this area with, you'll actually get more or less cutscenes or lose more or less time at Sandy Man. For example, if you exit here before the final nails have jumped to you, it'll actually warp you straight up to Sandy Man. And it'll cost you around 10 seconds, because for some reason he just won't let you give him the nails for like 10 more seconds. If you exit here too late like I did, you'll only have to skip um, two normal Sandy Man cutscenes. Normally, um, if you exit there fairly optimally, you'll have to skip four or three Sandy Man cutscenes. But um, 
It's it's really weird trying to explain it all, but just now, because I spent extra time in the mill, I only had to skip two Sandyman cutscenes. Normally, I would have to skip three if you don't quite have all of the hammer and nails, or if you exit the mill a little bit early, then you'll lose about ten seconds, and I normally just reset at that point. But anyway, now that we've covered that all, I'm going to be crossing the bridge. I'm going to be avoiding Bomber's cutscene here by just long jumping against the gate like that. That'll save us time both now and later. We're going to be opening these chests, and one important thing to know is, if you interact with a chest the exact moment that Bilbo starts talking, it will actually crash the game, so... If the item from this chest jumps to you too fast, you actually want to delay interacting with the second chest a little bit. But I was fine that time. Um, we're going to go ahead and head over to the berry patch now. There's a couple different ways to get through the berry patch, but the best way that i found is just to kind of... Try to not let him hear you, and the best way i found to do that is just to mash the jump button. That time he did hear me. If he does hear you, you kind of want to just wait it out a little bit. There are methods to um, getting him to hear you to actually save a bit more time. But you can kind of just exit the berry patch behind him, like that. Once you're done with the berry patch, you obviously want to head over and scare all these um, crows away from the scarecrows. That's um, one of the quests, although the quest itself doesn't trigger when you, until you go back and talk to this guy. But before we do that, we actually want to jump behind this haystack real quick, grab this needle, and then head back to this guy and talk to him. Obviously, I'm still holding my clipboard this time. Now, this is where um, I'm going to be trying to explain a really interesting trick called Chicken List that would have actually been set up later. As you can see, there are a bunch of chickens in this chicken coop. There are a couple easy ways to avoid them. The easiest way I've found to get into the chicken coop is to um, kind of just jump. You jump in here, you jump over this first site, you jump over into this back right corner, and you slowly hop your way over to the eggs, and then kind of just jump back out over the boards. However, there is actually a way to l unload the chickens that loses almost no time. We do not understand why it works, but for some reason, when you are back here farther, first of all, I'm going to point out this tree over here. I think it's this tree. It might be um, this tree back here, actually. But it's one of these two trees, whichever one you can see. You'll notice um, the textures on this tree, the way that it looks when it's fully loaded. That's how trees are supposed to look. And you'll you'll see, um, you can actually see when the trees load in. You can see their proper textures load in. Now you'll notice from here, when I'm heading over from these chests, you'll notice if I stand about right here, um, the textures on that tree over there aren't actually loaded in properly, and you can see them if you look over at the top right of the screen. You can see the textures on the tree, and you can see if I walk through here, you can see them load in properly. When you're standing in the area that the tree is unloaded, you can do a fairly precise long jump way over to the right. Let me just unload the tree real quick. Um, I think it's a little bit, because there's a zone right here for some reason where the tree textures unload and then reload. As you can see right now, they're unloaded. For some reason, if you do a long jump at about, I think it's like this angle, while the tree is unloaded, I'm not sure exactly what angle it is, but for some reason, if you do it properly, the chickens just won't load into the chicken coop. We'll see if I got it this time. No, I didn't quite get it, but it's definitely possible. I, I do it in quite a few of my runs just completely by accident. But like I said, I can't really explain it super well, but the chickens will unload if you do that long jump right. We call that chicken list. But anyway, once you get out of the chicken coop, um, you just want to head over here to behind these haystacks over here. We're going to go ahead and talk to child number two like this. And once we talk to child number two, we're just going to be jumping into these haystacks at about this angle. If you do it right, Bilbo will just kind of get stuck like that. And if all has gone according to plan, we should get warped back to here. Now, there is a fairly important reason why I set my clip warp all the way back here, and I'll show it off in a second. But for now, I'm going to be heading up this hill. Now, what's important to note is, if I had set my clip warp any higher up the hill, these NPCs that are needed for the quests would not have actually loaded. We're going to go ahead and do the two quests involving the butter churn and the quilting needle now, because A, it's faster to do the butter churn now, and B, we've actually got the quilting needle that we can bring to the lady. I move the butter churn just over here, talk to butter churn lady, and then head up and talk to quilting needle lady, and then head back down. Now, something you might notice almost immediately is that there are normally a bunch of fences here, but they're actually unloaded, and the reason for that is where we set our clip warp. We set our clip warp in a fairly precise area where both the NPCs will reload going back up the hill, but the fences won't reload, so that allows us to walk straight from this child all the way to child number four without actually having to deal with the fences or reclimbing hills at all. 
And now that we've gotten all four children, the very last thing left to do is just to um, get the apples. Um, if you walk around the corner just right, you can avoid that text box, but I managed to not do it. Um, most people like to knock down the apples with the rocks, however, um, I have a little bit of a different approach. This first apple, if you are right underneath it and you do a jump attack at the very highest point in your jump, you can actually just knock down the apple. The second apple can just be knocked down with a regular slash in the air, as can the third apple. It's a little bit more precise to do it with the third apple. But once you've got all three apples, you can just head out of the, um area and over to Bomber. I don't collect the Waters of Vigor because it wastes a good amount of time and because we don't need it. We're going to be fighting like eight enemies in total in this whole category. And anyway, this is the reason that um, skipping Bomber's text earlier saved time because A, it got us the chest a little bit early earlier, but B, it warps us straight to Bomber this time so we can just walk right over to him and talk to him. And now that we've talked to Bomber, um, He'll say thank you if you've done all the quests, and if you haven't done all the quests, he'll give you a different text, like you still need to do more stuff before we can leave, or something like that. But obviously, if you followed this route, you've done all of the quests. The very last thing we need to do now is just interact with the door. And as you can see from the menu, you don't have to show the menu off, because I've got a pretty decent idea when watching runs of whether all the quests have been completed or not. But if you feel more comfortable watching it, see if you completed all the quests, you can always do that. Another really good way to check is to pause right before the end of the level and see if you're at 22 out of 23 quests. Because if you are, then that also means you've done all the quests. Because the very last quest is just interacting with the door. We're not going to be buying anything in this level. And again, you should end the level with about 24 to 25 coins. If you miss, like, one coin, that's perfectly fine. There is one extra that I collect in, um... The berry path or the apple orchard area just because I'm waiting for my jump attack to reload but um yeah that's really all there is to those stages so in the next part we'll obviously jump into roast mutton